Hi, this is Janos, the channel is Real World Audio and today I'm going to look at whether you need mass loading for a void pipe or not. So I'm looking at that because I received a question and, and here it is. Uh, thank, thanks for the great tip, I already bought a tank band W81772, any thoughts on that? Mm. I have, don't have any first-hand experience, but a lot of uh, people tried it in void pipes and they absolutely love it. So I think, I think you will be in for a, a great experience. Some folks say that the type of void pipe needs mass loading. What does that mean? So let's now uh, talk about that. What does that mean? <laughs> so what is mass loading? So when you have a void pipe, it works the, in a way that basically you have a pipe and you have a driver stuck in in the pipe somewhere and and the driver is uh, is making the sound making the uh, making the sound basically <laughs> and and that part of the sound that that comes at you from the driver i'm pointing at the driver now because that's basically a mass loaded void pipe so that's what we are looking a big one and when we look at that one that's also a mass loaded void pipe, a tiny one, <laughs> baby, baby mass loaded void pipe and then and, and the monster mass loaded void pipe. Uh, so basically what happens that you have a pipe, somewhere a driver stuck in there and, and, and the part of the sound that the driver makes towards us, that, that faces at us, that's pretty much straightforward and that part behaves as what any other loudspeaker would do and the part that's stuck in the cabinet that is uh, uh, driving whatever is happening inside the pipe that is very different for a, a void pipe versus a base reflex cabinet. So when you have a base reflex cabinet or a sealed cabinet then it's just bouncing around inside your cabinet and it's testing the weaknesses of the cabinet. So basically it's trying to excite uh, cabinet resonances and, uh, and, and those resonances will just uh, dominate whatever is happening inside that cabinet. If it's a sealed cabinet then uh, nothing else is happening except those uh, excitations uh, and, uh, and then after a while the, the dampening inside the cabinet will just kill that part of the energy which is 50% of the output of the loudspeaker. So if you have a sealed cabinet then 50% of the energy is killed inside the cabinet and you want a really inert, really dead cabinet so that it doesn't escape to the outside because it's, it's turned into a mess and that there's a giant time smear on the inside. If you have a base reflex cabinet then there's a lot of bouncing around, lot of coloration, lot of time smear and only a certain frequency bandwidth is open for the port where the sound can come out. Now when we have a void pipe then, then whatever uh, the driver is moving all of those re resonances, all of those uh, frequency motions are triggering the air column inside your pipe inside your void pipe and, and, there, and it is getting actually some of the frequencies are, won't get triggered in, in, in your pipe because the pipe is just too big to, to amplify and to handle really high frequencies. So as, as we climb like uh, 5, 10 kilohertz plus then uh, you are going to see like uh, basically no output from, from your, your pipe, what is happening on the inside is going to get cancelled from all of the, uh, of, of the large distance of the, of the, the air column that, that we are looking at and the width and the depth of the column is just bigger than to support such high frequencies. However, the lower frequencies are just uh, getting uh, excited by the cone movements and, uh, and the driver, the cone, can transmit those low frequency waves efficiently to the air inside that column, much better than towards the 
air of the room, that part of the driver that faces you. So basically the front face of the driver cannot couple bass frequencies, that it can couple only mid-range and high frequencies. The back side is the one that can couple the bass because the air is restricted compared to what's out there in the room. And that restricted air uh, which is inside your cabinet is interfacing to the uh, to to your living room or or whatever room your speaker is in through two avenues. One of them is the mouth of your void pipe. Some people call it as a port, but it's not a port. It doesn't behave as a port. It is just an opening. It's much more like a horn's opening. We don't call that a port and we shouldn't call a void pipe's mouth as a port either. It's a mouth because it behaves uh, uh, a little bit closer to how a horn mouth would behave than uh, what a port does. Um, in reality, it's, it's, it's somewhere halfway between a mouth and a port or port's mouth or something like that we could call it maybe. Um, so m most of the energy exits from there, but also that resonating air also resonates the column, resonates your pipe. Uh, because most the typical void pipe is a wedge shape. Uh, so what it means is that the sides won't get excited by the resonances, but the, but the front panel and the back panel of, the vo of a traditional void pipe will get excited by, by the air resonance inside and the good news is that wood transmits acoustic energy faster than air. So whatever is being uh, energy is there in the cabinet, it, it can transmit faster to the air than it would in inside if, if it was just like uh, it. So it's not a rate limiting factor and it will not be the primary cause for a uh, time smear. Uh, so what it also helps is that it ha uh, helps the built-in acoustic energy. I mean the acoustic energy that's building inside your pipe can be released faster if you also let your uh, void pipes front and rear panel transmit this acoustic energy to the outside. And yes, in this case, uh, it, it will act as in a, in a wider frequency range compared to what you are getting through the mouth of the port. So when you design your void pipe to be extremely inert, then you'll have uh, more deep bass output, but you are getting less support in the mid bass and, and mid range frequencies, and uh, which I think uh, and, and okay, so one more thing. So uh, you are getting more support for the mid bass and mid range from a, a, a live void pipe cabinet, which I mean a live front panel and back panel. Uh, the side panel should be al always something like really stable because that's what's holding the pipe. That's why the pipe is great and does not have those typical uh, box colorations. Because of the triangle, the wet shape, it is not allowed to flex in a way that that an unstable cube-shaped cabinet uh, would uh, behave. So I think I'm kind of losing my train of thought here. But what I really wanted to say that if you have a void pipe that's like uh, acoustically uh, connecting the front buffer and rear buffer connecting to the air, then it's, uh, there's less time smear in it than in a pipe that is dead. Because if it's deadened, then there, there is going to be a bigger gap between the time alignment of the base energy and the mid-range compared to having a, a live cabinet where the whole thing just meshes together. But this is still not your question, because your question was about mass loading. So where does mass loading come into this picture? So basically, Mass loading is something that helps the air column to interface with your room at the lower frequencies. And, uh, and, and here 
uh, what, uh, what the question said is that some folks say that the pipe needs mass loading. Why? So I would say that in some rooms, yes, you need mass loading and in others you don't. And, and it also depends on your pipe and on the driver you use and the amplifier you use to uh, drive your pipe. And, uh, and unless you try it, you never know whether you will need mass loading or not. And my, my first thing is that always like, I would say, try out without mass loading and see how it works, uh, see how the bass response is. Uh, because you are going to get, um, I would say, try it out. And, and if you find the base lacking, then add mass loading to it. And uh, in my experience, why I'm doing mass loading to these drivers, I, I mean to these cabinets, I've added the mass loading to extend the frequency response one octave lower than it would do without the mass loading. So that's why that, that tiny folded uh, pipe there with its mass loading, it, it's really happy the singing down to 30 hertz. And for that tiny size, that's like ridiculously low. It should, shouldn't, should be working maybe down to like 50 hertz at best if it, there was no mass loading. Plus there I also needed mass loading for that driver because it, it wasn't doing anything in a void pipe. So that, that old Zenith driver is not suitable for a void pipe. And by mass loading it became suitable as, as a void pipe driver. And, uh, and also something is true for the Altec 515 is that it's not a typical void pipe driver and, and, and it does need the mass loading to, to interface it to the room. So I would say that if the, the QTS, the Q value is very low, it's like uh, 0 0.2 something, uh, then mass loading will help the driver to interface to most of the rooms. But if your Q is like 0.4, then you don't need mass loading. That's the short and long of it. Thank you for this wonderful question. Bye-bye.